at us too. And it was Peter's orping that was really what made it possible. Just insane, aggressive orping and just hitting all the shots and being very flashy in that regard. Created a lot of space for his team to win that, that game in a close fashion. And that was a big upset. And that, of course, that was... Whew, that was a long time ago now. That was, uh, that was January last year, end of January last year. So over a year ago. But I would agree, would agree with you. But that said, let's not forget, recently, despite having a you know, simple in the lineup, Liquid with a Dren were able to take down Fnatic on Dust 2 at LAN. Online in domestic matchup, you know, that is a very different beast entirely. But it does, it does tell you that they have a lot of individual skill to play with. And if they're firing on all cylinders, then it's a problem for any team in the world with, uh, with Liquid. But, um, Obviously, it's a shame to see you know Olaf Meister you know in, kind of out of the game, out of action as he is. I definitely miss his presence, just generally speaking, in the game. So we do have uh, right now just that five versus three situation. Just the patient play finally uh, is going to be a little bit. Uh, well, the frags will be a little bit expediated there by the aggression of Liquid, and it goes for three versus four. But in the meantime, MG have found their push up a long to be quite clear. Golden, the golden uh, brick roads, straight to the A bomb site. Indeed, and they have. To, oh, look, they've got two plays in long, but they're going to go for the short flank. I was going to say the range of those Glocks would be crap for from long, but indeed the flank is coming. I wonder if the uh, CTs have heard it now. They are sandwiched between T's. The trades, though, coming in. Well, like there was one trade for the CT side. Other than that, they all died. So great play there by NRG Liquid between a rock and a hard place, as the saying goes, Dan. And the T's got, sorry, the CT's got two frags in that round, so they could afford themselves two scouts, but uh, both players have gone for HEs and pistols instead. And uh, where will these HEs be going? Hiko will take his HE towards B. And we've got double HE towards Long, and there goes Legia, takes Nitro down first, and Leech is going to go and just pick up that gun, no problems whatsoever. Actually, I think, did NRG just drop some HEs there as well? Because that would have blown the gun towards the CTs. Whereas in that situation, especially it being an AK, I think it would have been smarter to HE the gun back towards them. Although they don't know if the, if the, T, the CTs are close, to be honest. So uh, safety first, as the saying goes. Silence and Justin quite heavily tagged. That is a nice shot straight in the face of Kusta. Another tag there. His teammates can come and clean up, but Peter will do it himself. So far, so good for the T's in this situation. But the flank is coming in here, and uh, he's got to be careful. The AK has been lost by the, the CTs now, which is a plus. He's going to get out of there, leave his teammates to uh, do the cleanup operation. I'm quite excited to see Peter on the orb after seeing you know, him hit some of these scout shots. He's, he looks very, very on point currently. If it continues, well, that is another question entirely. Liquid need an eco. I do like that they didn't really invest. Because, again, you know, four spies on this map, on CT side, suck. Especially against a team that knows what they're doing on their anti-eco. anti, anti -eco. I mean, it is so hard on this map. Definitely one of the hardest maps, I think, to, to successfully play a four spy kind of round. And, uh, oh, the lineup is lovely there for Justin. Able to pick up three kills with the UMP. That is going to be $1,800 in the bank. Nice. And that's pretty, pretty good news for him. So we are going to have uh, Hiko trying to get some something done here. He's got one HE. In it goes. It's going to be good damage to Gob, but it is not going to amount to anything in reality. Love seeing all the UMPs in play as we are these days. And now we see a quick AWP onto Kusta, a quick AWP onto Peter, and the battle begins. I doubt they'll face each other in mid. I think that would be definitely way too gambly for Peter to try to face here in mid. Is he going to do it? I think he's gone towards the A side of the map. Or rather, sorry, Kusta, even. He's gone towards the A side of the map. Obviously, Peter can face there. Um, but uh, for the TTs, it's much more risky. Yeah, so he's going for the aggressive short peak, which I like, I respect, I admire. Ooh, interesting angle for a... A flash, I presume he's holding. I think if somebody has a, a flash, a, a nade prime, they should probably say so in the uh, side panels here for people watching the match. 
So long has been taken by NRG. Good, important spray through the smoke day. You never know who is creeping behind the smoke stand. The thing is, right, is that if you see, again, I made this point earlier, if you see that long is completely clear like this, or that you push CTs out along with no frags, that means they're going to be on catwalk. Then you have to ask yourself the question, how do we, how do we abuse this? Oh, we saw this uh, similar smoke earlier for CT, right, to, to block crossover. Um, um, no, this is no. a different one. Oh, okay, so this is actually, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that is just, that is a, just, weird one. just a short smoke. Um, well, either way, we'll get the, just the charge up onto the A bomb site, and they should know that there's two players on catwalk. They should know that, and it's going to be interesting to see how they deal. They're just barreling into the bomb site right now. It's going to be down to the shots, and so far it's going to be NRG who are doing much better in that regard. Getting the bomb site going one man up. They have netted, or they are net one. Well, actually, they're not really. They just they just have plus one, James. Now plus two. Now plus three. I'm trying to think where that smoke was supposed to go because where it went does not make any sense. And and considering he he pointed it at the corner of the aerial, he must have been standing in the wrong position. I mean, I'm guessing it was meant to smoke off short entirely or bounce off the wall towards the bricks. So you smoke off the side of short where you jump down into a CT spawn or something. I don't know, but uh, whatever it does, it requires demo review because I don't think that went to plan at all. In Columbus, Hiko took me to a breakfast place at 5 a.m., James. Really? It was terrible. <laughs> was it a diner? Yeah, it was some kind of diner. I think it was a chain. I had a, a friend, when we were in Vegas, fly over from New York, and she took me to a diner by the airports, and it absolutely sucked. <laughs> It yeah. was the worst food I'm, I've I've ever eaten in America. I'm I'm generally not not a fan of crap food. Yes, but but also kind of uh, American breakfasts, basically all the way that Americans do breakfast. That's just a person. Nothing against. I, I had a very nice breakfast. America, but it's not my style. I had a very nice breakfast in San Francisco actually. Oh yeah. When I was last there. Um, I will find the name of the place if we have anybody from San Francisco. I, I, I need more ooh. in the stream. I need more experiences, I suppose, breakfast experiences, of which I'm sure I'll, I'll gain over the years to come before making a conclusive. My dear decision. friend Dan, if we go to San Francisco at the same time, I will take you on a culinary experience. Okay. For both breakfast and for dinner. I'm not sure about lunch though. You know, have you ever been to Bristol in the UK? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Well, obviously, obviously, it's not too far away from where we are now. But it's, apparently, that is. I've been there a couple of times. The food there is actually amazing. It's a food and music hub. Great. Yeah. Orps on to uh, both sides here. <laughs> <laughs> Orps on to both sides once again. Both teams back on the bye. So we have uh, NRG clearing out the B halls. And they're close now. I think. Oh, no pop flash actually through the doors. They're just going to go and have a butcher's hook and see what is going on over here. So, the, uh, sorry, CT spawn has been smoked off. Though Kusta is getting the first frag for the uh, CT side. Almost a two man spray down there for a drone, but he will be traded for. Hiko still on the site trying to get a second frag himself. Trades again and again, going the way of the CTs until Peter takes down Nitro. Two versus two, bomb gets planted on default and the doors have been smoked. They have indeed. And Liquids, I mean, in reality, they should probably think about saving. I mean, they have the max bonus on, they have the max bonus, but the thing is, if they save two rifles, they can just force up next round. I don't think they have anything left in the bank. If they do, they might be okay anyway, but the, uh, they don't really, again, if they had the, if they saved a couple, a couple there, I guess they still couldn't have forced two that. Two versus orc, two. Got to go for it, man. I, was, I thought it was two versus three. I'm definitely not 100% <laughs> right now. I don't know what has happened to your brain, Dan. I don't know either. Maybe. I'm talking 10 years ago. I'm not talking today. 10 years ago? What happened 10 years ago? I don't know, I'm wondering. It was a joke, but you didn't get the joke, Dan. No, I, I, Let's just move on. No, Let's just move on quickly. <laughs> There's still a buy for both teams. Liquid have gone for the force. Triple Famas here, but they've got CT. They've got T's on the B bomb site already. Hiko, not sure which one to aim at, but he finds the right one, gets a frag finally gets traded, man advantage for the T's. There's still a duel going on towards long, actually. So there's only three, I say only three T's over towards the B bomb site at the moment. Kusta outside is going to punish Justin for getting a little bit cheeky there. Wow. Two versus two now, as the bomb is about to get planted. Kusta sees Gobby just in time. Bad positioning by Gobby. Leaving Peter alone. He needs to collect the bomb. 
and uh, try to even up the numbers. He spots Nitro, but he doesn't know if it's Nitro Acousta, surely. So he does wonder where the second player is. Going to shoulder peek, certain angles, but if he goes through the window here, will Acousta turn around in time? He sees the information, he knows where both CTs are. Acousta comes in on his own and kills Peter before he can do anything about it. Liquid make their way onto the scoreboard. It's a really odd round as well because the silent coming up from cro crossover, like well into the, like maybe, the, the, the site take is pretty much, the site is more or less secured. And then silent, some suddenly appears into crossover from long. That seems quite, <laughs> quite random, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Kind of like, I was like, I was like, what? What? He's like sort of playing a different round to his teammates, it yeah. appears. Because you can understand if you push middle or something like that, or, or it was some catwalk or something, but all the way along, it's a little bit crazy. But you, you can see MLG are favoring some fast rounds. And, you know, Gobby with the fast timing on catwalk, he's going to get snapped down by Nitro. That's good that Nitro is able to punish in that situation. And that's going to slow down the approach for NRG. NRG obviously in a predicament now. They already have six rounds, so that, you know, it's a good situation for them. Liquid cannot possibly, cannot possibly allow or even entertain the thought that they could lose this round because their economy is going to be in such a dire state. NRG could have a, a mammoth first half and that is obviously not what they, what they want. And uh, Hiko, he's got so much work to do for all the players. I mean, this is a great call for NRG to just get themselves into the B site. But the spray is absolutely great from Hiko. He's going to be able to take down every single player. What a, what a result there. Not, not just one or two, but all three. And that is going to allow Liquid to string those rounds together. And uh, more importantly, the fact that Hiko didn't even die there is great because that means they survive a three. And that's going to you know, also be a very, very nice... And added, a nice added bonus, a boon to their economy. Easy for Hiko. Triple, well, not triple orps, but three orps are in play. Two of which are on the, on the liquid side. Having a good time of things. It's a nice little spray through the corner there by Legia. Common spray you used to see on old Nuke on ramp as well, which still exists on new Nuke. With the new boxes, but enough about Nuke. We have... Uh, just one player over towards long at the moment for Liquid. And there's a fast play through short again, but is well, Koos is in a in an inferior position to last time when he took down Gobby actually, which means that the NRG side can make it to the site. The bomb is uh, gonna get thrown over for Gobby to plant. So they the NRG looking to retain short. I really like that play. Um, we saw Dust 2 earlier, and the T side was struggling to actually keep control of the uh, area they came from most of the time when it was short. So NRG not moving all the players to the site once it had been cleared. Very smart play. They're putting attention to detail in. First frag goes the way of Adren, though. Yeah, this is very chaotic, and as I was gonna say, quite awkward here for Liquid with you know, two orbs trying to go for the, re the full retake, all from CT spawn, essentially. Very awkward indeed, but they've created a one versus two in, in their favor, and there you go. The orbs are panning out quite effectively for the Liquid side, and that was, that was a, a very rough round from many respects for Liquid. Again, this fast pace from NRG is, is, uh, is looking really good because basically, you know, we see them, you know, with this fast approach, and because they're actually coordinating it to an extent, they're gaining ground and they're using grenades to then kind of lock in these forward positions that they're getting. And then they can take the site and they can get the bomb plant. They're actually converting on the aggression into map control. And there's, that's great because a lot of teams, or, or you know, you'll see individual plays where a player, let's say, you know, Shox is famous for doing it, just run out and go for these jewels. And they don't get the map control. They just play for the frags. And uh, so I like that here from NRG and lots of aggression here. Kusta just running around there with the AWP able to finally turn around and snap down Silent. And he realizes there's more players oncoming. Kusta doing what Kusta does, but what Kusta does might not be enough here as it goes to a two versus two as he misses that last shot. But his teammates are there to collect. They are there to collect. There's two versus one now as Gobby is looking for a way to win this round. And he's got over a minute to do so. Ooh, he has been spotted now though, and he is going to get smashed down by Adren. It's really crazy how in North American CS... Yes. Just so commonly you find like half, half the people, half the people on a server die within one second. Like the, the round before last, when I threw to you, nine people were alive. And after you had said perhaps four words, three people were alive then. And I'm <laughs> yeah. just like, how do you... 
How, how do you even understand what just happened there, let alone, let alone commentate it? It's, it's kind of crazy. But, but it only really happens in North American CS. You just have so many situations where like, almost everybody dies in about two or three seconds. It's nuts. I don't know. I mean, obviously, that's, just, that, that, that's, that's a good sign, I think, in some senses when that happens because that means that the teams are trying to trade frag. That teams are set up in a, in a way that they're trying to trade frag and you're getting a bunch of trade frags. The bomb got so planted good. on eight with 10 people alive. On a buy for both teams. Or just the second, the second last round. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, yeah. But I mean, that can it can happen. happen, yeah. Yeah, that can happen. I mean, especially on, on a map like Dust2, if you give up cat control, it's, it's easy for the CTs to find a way to say, okay, let's try to play a retake. But the, re the really weird thing about that retake is that you've got uh, all the CTs coming in from CT spawn. And God B, I think he was a guy who planted for short. Yeah. He, he, you know, because, I mean, this is fine to do this. He pushed to, to just check long to see, get in some information for the team, maybe get a cheeky shot off or something like that. Just because obviously, you don't want to give you don't want to give the site away to you don't want to give the site away to the to the CT so that they can just basically get onto the A bomb site on their retake and then just, just block you off on short from with nades that that kind of sucks because then the short plant becomes more of a detriment than than a than a boon to your round and so you do kind of want to have some level of site control Gobi was going for that looks into CT spawn there's like four guys there with two of which have orps just gets orped immediately so it's kind of a weird retake I don't think I've seen a retake quite like that in a while. But, uh, but yeah, this, this is a really interesting match from that perspective. Yeah. That, well, Dust2 can offer some weird things as well. Like I've seen at least two rounds recently where we've seen plants on B, for example, on a buy for both teams and 10 people have been alive at the end of the round, twice in like the last month. That's pretty crazy. So, yeah. so, there's, so we're seeing some pretty wild th stuff on uh, Dust2 at the moment. I, I, have to, I, do, I do want to, you know, Mention again, you know, NRG's uh, some of their aggressiveness is is quite nice to see because because we've seen I think we've seen it a little bit too commonly that teams will go into rounds a little bit too loose and th there is a lot to be said for for loose play for just trying to get players into positions playing the defaults trying to see if you can get those one versus ones allowing you know your your members who are very good at you know maybe you know with the orb to try to find the pick or with the rifles or whatever it, what you know what have you. And then, then make the mid-round calls. That's great to see. But it's also really nice to see when teams say, we're going to, as a unit, coordinate, like, coordinate, coordinate ourselves to take long away from the, the opposing team. And you see that aggression. They can then convert that somehow. It can build into op other options or build into the round. And NLG have done some stuff like this. They've, they've, we can see you know, multiple times that the aggressive play is not just aggressive play for the sake of it. They actually convert it into something whether it's you know a team play situation to try to get a quick couple of kills and the control of some you know some part of the map and they actually lock that down with nades afterwards, which is nice, nice to see that. And uh, I mean, we have how many games have we casted where both you know both teams' approach is just to just play like Navi style, but they're not Navi. Yeah, yeah, it seems it's, it's, well, it's been very common, common this, this week yeah. as well. Yeah, it's, very it common. Seems to be a recent thing, maybe uh, fresh off the major for some of them. People just trying to take their time with things. I am curious as to uh, what uh, the North American makeup of the next major will be after the qualifiers and so on, which I believe are coming people's way sooner rather than later. But for now, we're back into the match. Liquid two rounds down versus NRG. Going to be on uh, the buyer once again, the, what, the CT side are. NRG on the eco though, so it's catch up time for Liquid. Adren with a well-timed MP9 going to be spotting oh on short. God. Oh, he's just leading them. Lamb sort of slaws here, but there's one more player to spot. There are some HEs on the CT side, but Kusa's playing the long range game, just taking them down. He is bowling and hitting all of the pins at the moment. Silent, top mid, alone, <laughs> P250, going to get taken down. How amazing is that though? Adren just sees, is that one, yep, two, three, like, because because often you'll hear the steps, you'll see work one, and you can hear the steps, and you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure there's like probably three or four there. We actually saw everybody. That's actually kind of nuts. Yeah, that's actually a really smart play, which um, another thing that I haven't seen people do before. It's like, okay, I see all the guys, they're eco. I'm going to let them funnel themselves into the A site so they're not going to be spread out and we can just, uh, you know, put them all in a barrel and then shoot them. Yeah. There's, that, there's actually some spots similar that I can talk about later to that, um, about letting teams take sites. But we do have, uh, once again, the buy. And it looks like Adrian is still playing the MP9 by Double Doors. Trying to play very economically. And that's actually quite smart too, because if you're trying to com be committed in this role, you're expecting maybe a frag and then a gun that's easily retrievable, such as that 
Adrenaline might find a spot later in the round when he can go collect that gun. Either way, right now, until that point, he can just provide information for the team. And LG, if they want to deal with him, they'll be forced to pop flash in through double doors, which is a very common play, and then try to take him down. So, and, and, and then he obviously get, can potentially get a chance there. But he is actually looking into the, into the, towards the doors. So if, if there was a pop flash there, Adrenaline would get wrecked by that pop flash. Um, a, a Nitro maybe not so much, but Adren at the very least. Speaking about wrecked, the, the split from NRG has been wrecked because there are no players remaining over towards A. Uh, long, sorry. Justin got taken down. We've got that smoke coming back into CT. Again, we don't really see the Fnatic smoke top off slope anymore, but uh, Kusta over the car would be uh, avoiding that anyway. So a double peak coming in, although Gobby almost jumped into the range. They both want to get taken down though. Elish coming in to support and finishing off Legia as well. Picking up the AWP for Kusta. Nice hold by Liquid, six to six. Yeah, one thing, one thing uh, a lot of teams, uh, I think, don't necessarily have going in their kind of backup plans on, on this map is, is uh, proper A smokes. You kind, of, you kind of started to talk about it a little bit. Um, for example, a long, 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 long time ago, I saw uh, NIP very good at this. They would have, they, they only need three players for it. And there's, there's three smokes that you can make a wall of smokes across the site and also down the kind of on crossover or around the slope. Nice. And that means that you can just, you can always just go get onto the bomb site without taking an aim battle and then get a plant and then force CTs to you. Even though you have a, a like maybe two men disadvantage, like three versus five, you can get on the bomb site and create a plant situation. A lot of teams don't have those, uh, those smokes where like every, every, where everybody knows each of those three smokes and they are very easy to do, but the wall of smokes on A is very important and they don't see it too, too much um, in, in that sense. But uh, just going to be the case of a quasi buy here for NRG. Let's we'll see if they can get something out of it. Obviously, a bomb plant would be really good. Kind of uh, forcing, like creating a situation to, to reinforce your economy is really nice on a map like this because you cannot really expect to win the round against the rifles and the orps with pistols on dust too. It's just so hard. I don't think Justin was expecting such a close peak. His shadow gave the game away there. Elish got a free kill. Still roaming around, getting a bomb down, uh, but Silent will even things up with the CZ kill. And Kusta is going to have his back covered by his teammates, and they're going to steal all the kills while he looks left and right. So Liquid take the lead now. NRG on a good buy on this occasion. More than reasonable buy, at least. Got about 6k per person, so we're going to have the AKs as well as the nades. Peter will be the only man sans grenades going for uh, obviously full armor and the AWP got a good spawn for long as well is he likely to be flashed off let's see both CT seem to be running in the jumping uh, bait comes in and now Kusta has the angle the fast wide peak from Peter they will punish Kusta Elige he knows Elige is crossed and is alone but uh, they will sit on that man lead for the time being and Elige will smoke long off, so it will be abandoned for now Ooh. by NRG. This is this is a pretty massive information play. Actually, you know, one thing Gulp doesn't actually have to do right now is to show the CTs that he has presence on this bomb site. Oh no! Oh, he's going to miss the kill as well. Because because it'd be really interesting if he allowed all of his teammates to get on the site before then showing that they have the site. Because it's very clear right there that Liquid had no idea that they had the bomb site. And obviously that, that basically gives them more time to set up, but already the CTs have responded. They got themselves into, into CD slope. Uh, it's rather into CD spawn. They're looking to try to push. And this time, I don't think it's gonna go so well as that last time when they pushed everybody through CT spawn. It's looking much worse. They don't have as many grenades. And, oh God, this, oh wow, okay. Maybe I should take that back because right now they're winning all the battles. This is going very poorly all of a sudden for NRG. Oh, this is really interesting right now. The, the, the GG Molotov is down. I think that bomb is ticking way too fast. Great spray coming in from Elish, but there's no time to defuse the bomb. And NRG are going to clinch to the round, but what a, what a strange affair there. I mean, if Gob just gets that kill immediately or just delays and takes the fight a bit later, yeah. the team are in a much better position. I mean, that, that's probably the unluckiest yeah, round yeah. that Gobby will have this, this half of the year. So I mean, uh, first, at least the team came through anyway. I actually didn't see if, if he actually legitimately missed or if that was first bullet inaccuracy. I'm not sure if, you know, oh, but we do have the auto sniper on Hiko, so let us, uh, let us bear, let us bear let witness. Us, let us pray. Let us bear witness. But the problem is, is that nobody's going to be challenging him just yet. 
I'd consider that a problem because I don't want to see the what a sniper get, uh, getting some use here. But uh, again, ag aggressive cat play coming in from Liquid. Two players on cat. This is this is a big tell right now. Long is up for free. If you see two players on cat, there's very likely that nobody's on long, or at at most one player. Um, but NRG don't have anyone in position to really punish that at the moment. And uh, the rotation from Liquid is coming in. They've got uh, an extra player moving across. They've got four kind of towards the A bomb site now. It's kind of the floater. Uh, just basically, leave, they can afford to leave Hiko in. B, B has got an auto sniper. He's pretty scary. He's still not being spotted as well. If NRG decide to go to B, they are pretty screwed due to, due to Hiko. And, I think. Ooh. God, B keeps his life. Yeah, I think the uh, corner of the wall helped him there. Mm. So, Silent is looking for the CTs as the bomb gets planted. The Dren timing coming in from the back. He gets a kill regardless, though. So, man advantage for the CTs now. Again, they still have control of Long, but there is a flank coming in towards Long. So, Silent just trying to slow them down with a few pot shots, but Leggy is the man here. Ellie seems to. Oh, the timing just looks right at the wrong time. And Nitro gets snapped. Silent goes down on the site. But uh, now Legia is a problem. Elish coming in, but he's going to get flashed just out of time. Hiko, the auto sniper, will help. But it's got to be alone versus Hiko and the Dren. Hiko will hold the initial angle with the auto sniper. And uh, it's going to be a problem for God B. He doesn't go for the wide pick. Very patiently done. And is it going to be enough? Yeah, he's got it. He's got it. It's pretty close. But Ooh. yeah, that's, that, that's really interesting too because uh, it, it looked like a Dren was very... Um, like he's a little bit fearful to go for the hold immediately. I think Hiko with an auto sniper, that almost feels like the best weapon to be in that situation with, because it's like a sniper rifle which does huge damage. The other player is very likely quite tagged up, so probably won't take one bullet, and you just spam away. It's. I don't so. know. I don't know if if an AK will be better in that situation because you're going to need two shots, and you need to click twice for those two shots. Well, it, I mean, I think he was. I mean, he was probably tagged. He's quite tagged, I think, already. No. I player on do not shot. recall. So, eight to seven, no real indication as to who is going to take this second map of a potential three. The third of which would be overpass, if it goes there. Time will tell. Yeah, I don't really know how to predict. Um, and ge generally speaking, a lot of the, a lot of the, there's a lot of variance still. Um, it's hard to, hard to draw, draw or extrapolate predictions that seem even somewhat relevant <laughs> when, <laughs> when the, the, there's this, uh, the amount of variance that we have. And, and this is partly, partially also due to the sample size. It's, it's not really the data. Is, there's not enough data. Need more data. But um, the aggressive cat play is, is the standard in the meta. I think a lot of teams expect this. And Liquid, oh my goodness, absolutely taking charge of Catwalk, leaving nothing in their wake. But lifeless corpses, which used to be their opponents. And now it's just Justin. Oh, there you go. Justin able to pop onto a leash, but it's now silent against three. Bomb goes down here as well. That is oh, that is a sigh of release, re release, relief. Sigh of relief for the T side. And then they finally close it You can say it is a release and a sigh of relief. It is a release. And a relief. Not a sigh of relief, but just a relief. A relief. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a relief. That's a stick in. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, NRG, they are they okay? Are they going with the four spot? I mean, they actually they're investing quite a bit here, but it's. I mean, Peter is the only player really that didn't spend all of his money, and Legia, Legia, um, will have a bit of extra cash just going for the Deagle. They really need to convert here, and we're gonna see the anti eco play. But what I I'm curious about is the bomb is basically left in spawn. For the T's. Adrian is in T spawn though, so I suppose he will bring it. I suppose it's a caution. Yeah. It's a cautionary because ha he has support now. Um, Nitro holding low tunnel, so it's kind of cool. I don't know. I still feel like I would want the bomb to be with the push. But I suppose if, if, if all those people, player. if all those people die, you're basically planning. Then you might as well just give the bomb to the CTs anyway. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, like, basically by having the bomb there, you're planning for your anti-eco into the it's like to fail, and that Adren has to clutch one versus everyone. Yeah. So that's basically what ah, you're saying. So I guess it is uh, null and void in that sense. Yeah, that's the problem that I have with it. <laughs> I mean, it's really weird because we actually saw quite a few rounds earlier today as well. Um, I think 
What, which EU game? Do, I think we cast it. Yeah, FaZe and VP. I think even FaZe and VP has always saw some rounds, if I'm not mistaken, whereby on anti force buys, the bomb was left in spawn. When pe and also people all over the place just more or less playing for one versus ones. And my brain was exploding. <laughs> it's just not, it's not fair. Why well, I think they do this on purpose. The troll. But yeah, you know, typically you should just be daily getting that site and get the business done. And NRG have been on the business end of, of Liquid's uh, superior arsenal so far. As uh, they, they failed to do much in the way of these, uh, these kind of somewhat save rounds. Get the full save more or less or close enough. Gobby's actually got 5-7 and Kevlar. Keeping that, keeping it alive. And uh, he's going to get completely destroyed. So the, unfortunately, the most uh, tooled up player for NRG, not really going to be able to lend much help to his team in the rounds. Just get the clearing of mid here. And this is, this is the thing, this is why playing aggression on the pistols can be quite dangerous or quite difficult to do on any, even any map. Ooh, two for one, up. two for one, nice. That's a bit of a uh, bit of bog off, James. Big of what? Bits of what? Bog off. Bog off. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. I mean, oh sorry. I think bog is slang for toilet, basically. It is, yeah. Oh, so you're thinking something to do with that? No, well, when you said bog, I just thought toilet. You know. Bog off. And bog is generally, you know, it's these days it's not the description of the finest toilet. <laughs> no, I mean, really. if you're at Glastonbury, for example, you you would describe those toilets as bogs. Well, yeah, because yeah, a bog is like a swamp-like environment. Yeah, well, NRG are Boom. sending liquid to the swamp at the moment. Sprays through the smoke coming in, but the site is theirs now. Yeah, the T-side. Nice yeah. Give me the double. This is actually getting quite interesting now because there's actually a lot of utility. NRG can, can mount a retake, but this distraction play from the flank as we can see from God B, that is, that, this is basically the most important 1v1 because if Dren, Dren gets, wins this 1v1, he can then lend help to his teammates. If Dren loses this 1v1, it's all over for his teammate. Oh, the patience. Oh, but there you go, he's gonna get shot in the back. The timing there and... Uh, all is lost. All is indeed lost. It's interesting because again, if the timing had worked out, the one-on-one -on -one comes in for Dren first before the CTs push the site, then maybe maybe there's a chance there for uh, for Liquid, but uh, you know for them at least they got the bomb down because that that entry they got they got they, they, they did get the garden hose treatment. I was wondering if NRG were going to pick up the second orb actually, which Adren lost in in the apps, um, and indeed he did. So uh, yeah, I think that is definitely something that they should a, re a resource they should make use of while it is free. And now we have a pause coming in because I understand one of the teams has a team speak issue, which needs to be resolved so hopefully they will do that and fix that soon so nrg three rounds behind liquid at the moment you can see well you can't see any more but the buy is coming out for for both sides essentially i mean it's going to be pretty hard for for liquid but sorry for nrg but liquid are going to keep the pressure up so liquid with a three round lead at the moment i mean do, are you favoring somebody at this point uh well i mean i have to favor liquid because i believe liquids have I mean, the thing is, I, I, I can't say that Liquid are the better team because we already discussed this. Obviously, you know, you can't, you can't deny their results at the, at the major and they managed to make a semi-final run. But that was with Simple in there instead of Kuster. They had at least a degree of routine there. And well, did they? Well, that's also a good point. Maybe they even did. They didn't it's, really practice for the major then. Yeah, it's so hard really to, to just... So you can't, really, you can't really read that much into it, can you? You can't, you can't make a prediction because again, there's no real data, but you do want to say just on, on name value that Liquid should be winning this. But the thing is, is that as we've already seen with players like Peter and, and the fact that generally speaking, NRG individually, they look more than capable of dealing with Liquid. I think it's completely open still. I mean, it's 11-8, I mean, Liquid are three rounds ahead, but they're still five rounds away from winning. So that's, yeah. that's a lot of time left for the economy to go one way or the other. And this, this next round that's coming up is very important in that sense because both teams are buying within essentially a thousand, having basically at max a thousand dollars left. And so the winner, let's say Liquid wins this round, they should be up against another Eco. They're able to win that. Liquid are up to 14 rounds essentially already. 
However, if NRG win this round, then they, they get to tie the game up. So this, this round is, is very crucial in that fact. But, but yeah, I mean, I will say liquid. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I will say liquid. What do you say? I don't say anything, Dan. You say nothing. All I'll say is uh, while we wait for this team speak issue to be resolved, I think we'll go for a quick break because we're not sure how long it's going to take. As soon as it is resolved, we will be straight back here with the rest of the match. So uh, bear with us, guys. Uh, we'll bear with them, rather. And we will be back in hopefully a few minutes with the rest of the match. See you back here shortly. Welcome back. So, all issues have been fixed and we have a three-round lead for Liquid. Which continues. Again, the uh, AWPs are in play. NRG picked up a second one in the previous round from Liquid after taking the round. And Liquid will have purchased their own on to Kusta. So, it seems Liquid are hell-bent on taking the long area now. And, uh, ooh, Peter getting flashed there. It's going to concede his position, maybe deliberately, maybe... By accident. Got a good flash with Gobby and he's going to get taken down. In a trade though, Nitro goes down first. Legate coming in for some support now and he could get taken down despite being blind 
uh, despite Lego being blind. So two versus four, this is looking super good for NRG at the moment, but the bomb site has been lost, but the bomb is in control of the CTs and they have the uh, range as well with the AWP, he's on silent, which he, he's currently in mid, getting sprayed down though, so back to a two versus two now, still a minute on the clock for Liquid to contest the situation. Yeah, what an awkward spot, I mean, oh yeah, that is, <laughs> that, okay, that's one way to deal with it, really nice pop there from Adren, that's some of the stuff we saw at the Major, just the insta snaps, and uh, that jump was punished. That, that is so important as well. I mean, that pit position is so hard to deal with, or can be. And uh, Adren just makes it a non-issue non for the team. And Liquid pick up the round. And uh, as stated previously, the economic situation for NRG is somewhat dire. Uh, Legia could, I mean, it's, it's really annoying because it's a spot where actually, if this was, you know, if this was maybe like around round 12 or something, Lego could easily have just bought an AWP and they could have forced with the AWP. And that would have been, I think, a legitimate play to make. But they can't really risk risk that at this stage. It's getting too late right now. They need a strong buy together. And uh, we're going to see what could be quite awkward. Having two AWPs on an anti-eco anti, anti -eco can sometimes be a little bit finicky. But uh, so far, you know, the, the aggressions are coming in from the CTs. And so because the CTs are coming to Liquid, they're actually making Liquid's life a lot easier here. Although Liquid is sustaining a lot of damage, they are getting the kills, so... <laughs> I think it's getting shot in the back there. Hungry for the frags, look at the health as you well. It's, uh, I was going wow. to say it's actually quite impressive to get an AK kill through those doors because if you're not using an AWP, the penetration basically sucks through those doors for almost any weapon. I'll, I'll skip the yeah. Deagle because that would need to double check, but I imagine it's fairly... Okay. As you can that, see, then again, case in point, right there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's doing a bit of damage to Justin, but bearing in mind, he's got no armor. Exactly, yeah. So it will do more, so we'll have to... Uh... Wait, has he completely run out of bullets in his AK? I'm assuming that he must have. Yeah, well, I heard the click, so I know that he did. So that's kind of hilarious. And uh, he goes, only got 36 HP, but everyone in his team is tagged, so this makes it a little bit awkward. But obviously, Justin won't realize that Hiko is completely out of bullets. Adren coming in, but he doesn't want to get too... Or he's getting... Everyone's in trouble, but nobody dies. 5 HP, 28 HP, 10 HP, 5 HP. NRG close, but not close enough. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really nice for Liquid, because if NRG do start to take rounds, they're going to have buy against buy against buy to deal with. Um, for Liquid, so Liquid won't ever really be put on in eco if, if they're able to, you know, take this round some, somewhat uh, decently. But we'll see. No challenge coming in directly. Oh, Adren ready for Peter. Now that is a massively gambly play, and the reason why it's it's so much worse for the CTs to do that than the Ts, because if you go down four versus five of the Ts, you can still construct around there. But if you lose a man early as the CTs, it is painful. The Ts can do so many. Horribly dirty things to you, and already we're going to see three players gone, wiped clean, off the rounds, sent to the bench, giving Liquid what could be that 14th round. And that you can see now Liquid converging towards the B tunnels, the upper dark area, the upper tunnels, looking to make their way into the B bomb site, on which there currently are no players. So all they have to do is just trade against this player, and luckily for NRG, I was going to say luckily for NRG, they have an AWPer. There's no luck in this round, Dan. <laughs> no, not really. But of the two players, you would want the AWPer there instead of Legia, who's got the rifle. That, that's, that's the, uh, that would be the clear thing. And as you can see, James, on the boxes, on the A side, it says aid. Wait, show me Observer, please. See, right okay, there. I see, okay, you saw it? It does say aid, indeed. Yes. You're the, you're the only person who calls it aid. But isn't it munitions on the B sites? Don't know. Well, the thing is, is you can have all different types or of Or is it? No, it's just boxes. And it's, it's, it must aids. be. Yeah, it's just all aid. Aid all over the place, Dan. <laughs> it's a lot of aid. Full blown aid. Wow. Well, let's see if Legia can save this gun. Oh, Cooster's in trouble now. And he has the AWP, which could be saved. Well, that's a lot of damage done to the liquid side. Is he going to like just ace the team here? Is that what's going to happen? It is, yeah. Wow. He's just going to literally kill everyone and save the AWP. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting, interesting thing because I feel like um, in spots like that, you want to say, okay, how many players is it okay to invest here while still keeping it, you know, the situation in the long term really good for us? And 
I don't know what the answer. I don't know what the correct answer is there. Maybe it is all five players. Maybe the chances for them to win that one round with the orb goes up so so much. You can't weigh it successfully against against uh, you know your own future rounds if you start losing. But whatever. We got the, oh my god, Ooh. Booster just going in, and he's going to go down as well. And they've only got pistols and scouts and so on. And now they've got an extra orb, James. He gave them an orb with that aggressive play. Obviously, if he hits a shot, he looks like a hero. But that's such a risky play. And I mean. The, okay, so Liquid have to respond quite quickly to this. They don't really want to allow Legia to use this AW, or rather Silent, to use the AWP that he picked up. I really hope that Liquid uh, have the same short holds that NRG did on their T side. And indeed, Liquid will keep two people over towards short. Very important for them to do that, especially considering they're up against three rifles now. They know that at least, well, they know that two orbs are in play because one was taken in the previous round and one was just donated to them by Kusta. And now the creep comes in from long. So again, this short hold is going to be extremely important. There are no nades left for the liquid side. Still smoke splashes and nades here on the uh, on the CT side. But they've got to be super careful about this. Nitro takes down Peter, very nice snap. Legia almost goes down, but the HE will do the work. And now a liege. Oh, things are getting awkward actually. And Legia in a one versus one is going to have to go for the save, presumably because he doesn't have a defuse kit. So Liquid are going to go to match point versus NRG with all of eight rounds on the board. Yeah, and that, that was obviously not winnable for Legia. I'm so happy that he just didn't peak. Obviously, that would be a ridiculously foolish let, thing let, to let, do. Let's say suboptimal play. Foolish. <laughs> let's say suboptimal. Um, but, but yeah, you know, what a crazy round there. Kakusta's push alone past the smoke into the B site when they have nothing is very questionable, <laughs> that I must say. It seems they didn't throw enough rounds at the Major Dan. <laughs> they wanted to get some more in. Yeah, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to just straight out say that that was really, you know, really, a really, really bad play, but, and, and be, you know, results oriented anyway, but I think that's... An def unnecessary risk, all things considered. That is a, yeah, a hugely unnecessary risk. Um, there's so many way more ways for them to win the round than Kusta getting that entry there alone with no support because of smokes and so on. Anyway, um, beyond that, we do have the first pick going towards the liquid side, which is good news for them. Obviously, they're on match point at this at this rate. So um, it's going to be tough now for energy to bring themselves back into the round because even with evening things up as they have, look at how the teams have converged here onto the B-bomb site. And now Silent has to get it done with a UMP. Good luck, sir. He's got the element of surprise, but now he's been discovered. And Nitro, so fast, will take down Silent. And the uh, bomb has now been been put on the floor. It is, it's tumbled towards the, uh, the plant spot. And God, he's going to spot the shadow. Oh, the snap comes in. Quick flick will be the death of Alige. Hiko against two now versus Gob and Legia. He's got to pick up the bomb. And they uh, hit up the first frag. Second player in. And Legia cannot find the finish. And that's the 16-8 there. And we were at the point where it was very close. And it, could have got, it felt like it could have gone either way. I mean, you asked me, but Liquid managed to win that round. They managed to get the ball rolling. And despite Kusta's uh, attempts to maybe make life a little bit harder than Trojan it horse, Dan. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, like, it's like, guys, Liquid's guys, take win. this big green gun. Liquid will still, still be the victors. Anyway. Indeed. So uh, I think NRG are going to be frustrated with the fashion in which they lost that I th map. I, th I think... Or I, match. I, I think... Map one is going to be the frustrating thing for them. Yeah. I think that's the biggest frustration, especially because it's their, their, their map, you know? Yeah, they and looked good for it. They did. But ultimately, they were unable to take it over the line. So that's going to bring today's show to a close. We will be back tomorrow, starting with Europe, which will be FaZe versus Envy, then moving on to North America a bit later on. So uh, again, thank you for tuning in today. And uh, just a quick reminder, tomorrow, because we did a giveaway for 700K and nobody claimed their prizes, which is crazy to me. We will be doing it tomorrow during Phase versus Envy. So we're going to have a Glock Fade to give away for subscribers, uh, Factory New, Stat Track, Fauci and I Fade for subscribers, and then we will have an open raffle. What are you doing? Checking your uh, pulse? No, no, I'm, I'm looking to see when that match is going to be because you just said which match it is, and I'm trying to see when it's going to be so I can tell them. Okay, great. So uh, <laughs> okay. the open raffle is going to be for a Karambit Rust Coat. So yeah, that's all for today. Thank you for tuning in. It's going to be in about 12 hours, or just less than 12 hours. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 5 p.m. GMT. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow.